This episode is brought to you by Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, you should definitely check them out. It's a super easy tool that anyone can use to create and distribute their podcast. It has everything you need, and you can do it all from your computer or even your phone. Need your podcast cover art? There's a tool. Music and sound effects? They have you covered. Want to record on the fly? It's easy with the app. Now you may be saying to yourself, I already have a podcast. No worries. Just create your account, upload, and publish to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Looking for some walking around money? Anchor connects you with advertisers who match your brand. It's a one-stop shop for all of your podcasting needs. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You're listening to Biz Quick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. Biz Quick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real-world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the Biz Quick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Hello and welcome to Biz Quick. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And on today's show, you have me and Julie, and that's it. And we are going to talk about important traits that entrepreneurs should have. And I think we're going to try and keep this as general as possible because obviously, depending upon the type of business or industry or whatever, like mm-hmm. you're going to, uh, things will change and or. or things will be different for that type of person and different circumstances in, in life and all of that. But I think that there's certain things that every entrepreneur should should have. Um, but before we jump into that, or maybe this is the question for the end. I don't know. I'll let you decide. If people don't have these traits, should they be an entrepreneur? Mm, let's let's ruminate on that one and save it till the end. Okay. And But before we dive in, and I'm going to ask you a question, I just want to ask our listeners something we normally say at the end of the podcast is if you find yourself loving this show because it's so interesting, engaging, you learn little tidbits, um, you find yourself laughing, you should subscribe and you should share it with your friends and family and even people you don't like because in all honesty, the more you share it, the more people we have that listen, the better the show gets. So if you want to support us getting better and bigger, subscribe, like, give us a review, share. All right, Corey, when your mind, in your mind, what is the single most important trait that an entrepreneur needs to have? Um, and most important, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give that one at the end. I think okay. we'll round it out. Um, okay. Because I think there's a lot that they need to have. Mm -hmm. Um, I think being a risk taker by nature, like, is an important part of being an entrepreneur. You need to, you need to be able to analyze risk, understand risk, and not only that, like, accept losses. Because, like, when it goes to gambling, for example, like, as everybody out there probably knows, we love to gamble. And yes, I love, we do. <laughs> I love talking to my friends about gambling. And, and some of them are, are, you know, enjoy it as much as, as I do. And some uh, think it's just crazy. And it's one of those things where, you know, if you sit down at a poker table and you're up $100, let's say. You sit down for 30 minutes and you're up 100 bucks. There's two types of people in the world. There's the people who are going to say, oh, I just made $100. Take it and walk away. And Those then aren't us. That's not yeah. us. <laughs> and then there are the people who are going to, you know, take it, walk away, and never play poker again. Yeah, I got lucky once. It's never going to yeah, happen exactly. again. Yeah, yeah. Or there are the people who are going to say, oh, I made 100 Let's turn that into two. Yeah. And I think that the latter is more appropriate for entrepreneurs to a degree. Because there's obviously people who have gambling problems out there. You need to know when to cut your losses and walk away. <laughs> but or you know, or when you're up, you mm-hmm. know, when to walk away, knowing that you're gonna come back another day. But I think that's an important trait. What about you? Um, I think it, so I'm, I'm gonna go with this one first. Uh, resiliency. I really think that you have to be able to bounce back from 
like losses or from tough lessons. Like you have to be things that don't work. You try something, it doesn't work and you just, you need the bounce back and you need to know like one failure does not mean that the business has failed or that I'm a failure as an entrepreneur. So to me, resiliency is really key to being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I think that that kind of goes hand in hand because with, with the risk taking, because when you, when like when times are good or times are bad, regardless, like you need to be able to put it all in perspective and know that yeah. the good times aren't going to go on forever and neither, neither the bad times, you know, yeah. and and you have control over that to a degree as well. Yes, I would agree. I would agree with that. I like that. Um, I, I like that thinking. And I also but I think that resilience to me is a muscle that you build, right? You get the more difficult situations you work through, the more resilient you become, the better you get at going through difficult things. And so if you have, if you're just starting out as an entrepreneur and you haven't really experienced a lot of hard things in your life, that's what she said, (laughs) then it is really important that, um, you understand in those, you know, early months and years that those difficult situations you encounter are just helping you build that resilient muscle. Sure. And um, it's funny. So right before we started this podcast, we hopped off a call with um, a younger gentleman who was in marketing. And um, I say younger, he's younger than Julie and I, but the the way that he... he, Not by much. (laughs) Well, um, (laughs) but yeah, but he he asked for our, 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 some wisdom, some sage advice from, Mm -hmm. from the older people on the, the phone call. Um, and he, um, he asked like if there was one piece of advice that we could give to, um, give to him. And it was just kind of out of nowhere, just like parting, like what, what piece of advice would you give to me? And it was, first we needed some context because we were like, what do you mean? Don't do drugs. Yeah. Like (laughs) give me anything. (laughs) Um, he's like, what would you tell your 24 year old self? And I told him, well, what I would tell my 24 year old self is probably different than what you need to hear right now. (laughs) Um, but uh, so my advice was be flexible and, and, and I think that's important. But the one thing that like, I like after we got off, I was like, well, the one thing that I really wanted to say, I guess, or the point I was trying to get across is that you have control over certain parts of your life. There's certain things that you can control, certain things that you can't control. Um, And there's no sense in getting upset over the things that you can't control. And those are often, in my opinion, the big things in life, like the big events, you know, a pandemic, somebody dying, like all of that stuff. Like those are the things that you can't control. Um, And so the saying, the saying, don't sweat the small stuff, in my mind is kind of backwards because you shouldn't sweat the big stuff. Like you, there's nothing you can do about it. So you should care about the details. You should care about the little things. And and those are the things that you can control often are like the, the little tiny changes you can make in your life. You can't make the big changes or take control over the big things that are going on in your life. So that's yeah. my advice, Emmanuel. Well, m- my an interesting side note is when you say don't sweat the small stuff and you say don't sweat the big stuff, I would say if I had a superpower, it would be not to sweat at all, to be able to cool myself without sweating. Yeah, and then you'd pant. You'd pant. <laughs> right, right, right. There's already a solution for that, so apparently that's just a wasted wish. Yes. Um, what was my advice to him? I don't even remember, and we literally just had the conversation. Oh, I gave him, I gave him two pieces of advice. The first one was to that people think about you a lot less than you think they do, so don't let the opinions of others hold you back, and I think that's great advice for entrepreneurs, right? You start something and you're a little bit afraid of what other people are going to think. And honestly, you shouldn't care because you can't control it. So it kind of feeds into what you just said. You you cannot control it at all. And it really doesn't matter because there's a lot of people. I heard this saying a couple of weeks ago and I just loved it. Just because someone's in your circle doesn't mean they're in your corner. So you can have somebody in your network or you know, that's in your network or that's in your circle that you think is like really cheering for you. And they're not, and you just can't care. You just have to keep moving forward and doing the thing that you want to do. That was my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice for him was find ways to take, take easy decision-making out of your day, like repetitive decisions. So sort of, you know, along the lines of like Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs, like they removed the decision of having to decide what to wear every day. And as weird as that sounds, 
there's some sound logic behind that of it's something you know it's one less thing you have to think about that you can focus on the big important thing so yeah and while i agree to that to a degree yeah i had to make sure i got my agree and degree in agree and degree order. correct um, yeah so yeah while i agree to that to a degree I also wonder how much uh, computing power Steve Jobs saved daily by wearing just a black turtleneck and jeans. Well, that was just one example. I'm guessing there are a million little things that he did over the course of his career where he got to, where he eliminated having to make those decisions, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, the, there's that, I, I guess. But again, it's also like, for me... Like, and, and maybe this is the same thing, but like, I don't, it's not like, I don't wear the same thing every day. Oftentimes it's very similar, mm -hmm. but again, it's like, uh, maybe it's the same thing. I just, I don't care. Like I'm just, uh, so I'm, I'm putting uh, no effort into it because it was just like, whatever the first t-shirt is, I grab, you know, the cleanest pair of shorts on top of the pile is what you know goes <laughs> on. Like, it, and, and, and that's that, that's the end right. of like, the decision. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I get that. I just, I do think that that it is the compound effect, right? When you start adding up all the decisions you don't have to make, it becomes easier. So you've got more free time. You've got more brain power to use on other things, Corey. Let, let me tell you, it has not paid off. So I don't know when, when that, all that time is going <laughs> to like, I mean, I guess at the end of my life, all of a sudden I'm just going to be like twiddling my thumbs because I, uh. Like, well, I saved all that T-shirt time, so. <laughs> well, I, actually, though, I, you're the reason that I was think I was thinking about that earlier today um, before we were even on that call with Emmanuel. And the reason I was thinking about it is because of something that you said over the weekend was that um, you move, when you decided to move to Richmond, that that was it was done and over and that you were never going to have to consider where you were going to live again because you'd made that decision and you didn't now now there was no more thought that needed to go into that and i thought that we've had this conversation before where there's like so many approaches that you take to things that i'm like god that must be so freeing to never have to worry about that right like listening to your internal monologue which you don't have like that must be so freeing you don't spend any time arguing with yourself ever no. Yeah. So it's that, you know, removal of those things. Like you really do have, that's why you're so smart, Corey. That's why you make such like expert decisions on things because you don't ev ever even consider like things that are just like no brainers. You don't spend any time. You don't waste your energy on stuff that doesn't matter ever. Sure. I mean, and that's not to say that I don't make calculated decisions. Oh, no, I, didn't, I yeah, didn't mean that at all. I don't I think some things through, but for the most part, and that's, uh, I mean, we can get into that, um, which would be another good trait that entrepreneurs should have before, yeah. we, before we take a quick break. But that's, uh, I mean, just being confident in your decision. Don't second guess what you're doing. Yeah. And it's, and it's not, there's a difference between being stubborn about your decision. And <laughs> well, you are stubborn. Sure, but I also will admit when I'm wrong. It happens very rarely. But, uh, <laughs> I I immediately was like, when's the last? Well, you know, you do. You admit yeah, when you're like, wrong. Like if, if, it's, if I make a decision and it's a bad decision, I'll own it. Yeah. But for the most part, like, you know, it's, it's if you're going to make a decision, make it and go with it. Don't yeah. second guess yourself. Don't, uh, you know... Uh, Ask for a million, a million uh, opinions before you make it. Just oh, make, yeah. make a decision, own it, and if you're wrong, you're wrong. Make another one next time. Make it better. Make it worse. Doesn't matter. Just make it, own it, and go with it. Yeah, use the data that you learned that you gathered from making the wrong decision. But I did not mean that you don't make calculated yeah, decisions. I I, that's not what I was. saying. I'm just clarifying it for all of our listeners out there. Okay, okay. I'm not just lucky. Let me tell you. If you look at my. My betting, <laughs> my, my, my win loss record. You can know that I'm not just lucky. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Okay. Should we uh, Should we take a break? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. We wanted to take a quick break to tell you about our newest course called Time Bomb. If you're ready to take control of your calendar, this course is for you. We guide you through all the steps you need to understand where you're spending your time, what your time is worth, and how to build out your days and weeks so that you can add more value to your business or just spend that time enjoying life. We have three options for you. The course, a bundle which includes products designed to help you become more efficient with your time, and a boot camp where you'll get time in a small group setting to get the personalized help you need. 
Head on over to sbpace.com to learn more. Time Bomb, take control of your calendar, gain control of your life. All right, everybody, welcome back. We are going to continue the conversation about the traits that entrepreneurs should have by talking about actual traits that they should have. I know. Um, and not really tell some stories or, you know, whatever it is. Stories are good, though. Stories are good. And People learn great. through story. They do. You are correct. Yes. Um, I think a trait of being a good entrepreneur is being a good storyteller. Yeah, and a good listener as well. Oh, listening is so important, yes, Corey. Yes, it is. Yes, it we is. We all learn from that piece of advice, Joy. <laughs> um, I feel like that's a message for me. No, no oh. that's actually for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, I'm, so communication is definitely a, a trait that every entrepreneur should have, like mm-hmm. good communication skills. And I would say, and I think that you would agree, that the communication skills and, and abilities w- would differ, and they could they should just fit your culture. Not everybody needs to be that open door, hey, everybody come to my house and whatever. It's like you just need to be able to, like, consistent and transparent and, you know, uh, consistency, I think, is the key. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think it's different when you have... If you have employees, your your communication, you know, abilities and and the mechanisms that you use to communicate, um, I think you've got to be like transparent communications are just the best in general. Like you can't go wrong with communicating transparently with, you know, your customers or your employees, but you don't have to be, you know, a great at written communication in order to be a good communicator. Right. So it, I think there is a lot of options in terms of communication and you just need to make sure that you're at least, you know, skilled and adept at one of them. Well, and like what I'm saying is that you just need to be consistent and clear in your communication. So if you have that bubbly personality, your communications can reflect that. And if that's what you want your business's culture to be it could reflect that. But if that's not who you are or your business's culture, then it doesn't, you know, don't try and be something that you're not. So your communication style, uh, not necessarily style, your tone, your voice, whatever, like it needs to fit the culture. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I think that an important trait for being an entrepreneur is the ability to, stand up for yourself and defend yourself. Right. And I don't know if I'm using the right words there, but I I think it's real easy to kind of get down on um, yourself as a um, entrepreneur when you hear feedback from people and to, to be able to, you know, stand up and especially like when you think about everything that we just went through in 2020, right. Small business owners, entrepreneurs needed really to stand up for themselves in many instances to actually stay in business, right? Because it was just, it was a tough year. The cards were stacked against them. So you should feel comfortable standing up for your rights and standing up for the rights of your, your business and for staying in business. And if you don't feel comfortable being vocal and defending yourself, it, I think that's going to lead to problems down the road. Yeah, and that comes back to, I think, confidence and being assertive. Because it, and and also, I mean, you don't necessarily need to be the one who's being vocal, but you need to at least be able, to, like, be confident and or comfortable supporting those who are. Because you don't need to be the person, you know, with the placard on the side of the road yelling at cars as they drive by, but you need to be able to support the people who are willing to do that. Yes, I. Yep, and I think assertive was probably the word that I was looking for. Okay, you're yeah. welcome. You can Thank, use that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think another one, creativity. Um. Yes. Yeah. You hesitated. You well, don't think that? Understanding creativity, because not everybody is not not everybody can be creative or creative in the ways they need to, but I think that they need to be able to understand and appreciate it. Well, I, so what's interesting, I'm now going to ask you um, to tell me what the word, what that means to you when you hear creative. What does that mean to you? Do you think you're creative? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. You were so firm on that. Yes. Do you think I'm creative? Yes. Okay. 
do you, I, would you agree we are creative in very different ways? Yes. 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 So, so what is being creative? What does that mean to you? I mean, it's being, it's thinking outside the box. It's, uh, being able to see what's, you know, read between the lines and, and interpret things differently and, and view things from different angles. Like when it comes to business, um, you know, it's being able to, uh, see the big picture, but also have an eye for the details. Like it, it's, it's kind of just like that all encompassing, like being able to, to, you know, when an artist creates a painting, like they, they not only are like focusing on the little details throughout, but they're also, they've got a, 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 a vision for the entire picture that they're creating. Mm-hmm. And for somebody looking at that, they, you know, you can see the whole picture and if you get up close, you can see the details. And every time you look at it, you might get something else based upon your, the current state of mind that you're in at the time. So, you know, I, I think that it's knowing that you might not be the person who can create that piece of art, but you can appreciate it in a way. Interesting. Okay. It's also uh, like a part of being creative. Yeah. And for the record, I was going to say, if you were going to say that you were not creative, I was going to tell you that you were wrong. You are extremely creative. I'm the most creative one out of the two of us, Julie. (laughs) Uh, That might be true. I'm not really sure. If you're the most creative one, then I have the better ideas. No. (laughs) (laughs) I have more ideas. Yes. (laughs) Quantity does not necessarily reflect quality. Yeah. Yeah. No, you are. I I frequently think when we are on calls with clients that you have missed your calling and that you should be in marketing because you come up with some of the best marketing ideas of anyone I have ever met. Well, I've always said that my dream job is to be like just in a room and I just get to approve or disapprove, disapprove or whatever, reject. Um, Every piece of marketing ever that goes out, whether it's a local like radio spot or like a national marketing campaign, because I just I, I, that would be my dream job to be like, nope, that's terrible. What were you thinking? Okay, that works. That sucks, but whatever, you know. Because it's like I, we all see those like commercials on TV, like especially like local commercials. Yeah, local news is probably like the the biggest offender. It's like your local news in like a local retail spot, whatever. Like they have like, for some reason their dogs always involved. Um, oh yeah, or like a local car dealership. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. There's a green screen. To, yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. Like all of that. Like I want to be like, nope, nope, nope. Start over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, <clears throat> but I mean, to your credit though, the um, the not uh, persistent, I guess, might be the word that I'm looking for. Like we were talking about, like you're always coming up with ideas, mm-hmm. and you're not like. Like you're not afraid of getting shot down. No, I'm it's, so used to it with you. It doesn't even. <laughs> yeah, but but it's like it's like not settling. I don't know. The resilience not, of well, just coming back again well, and again. Well, it's not even resilience. It's like not being okay with complacency. I don't know what the word is. There's probably a word that would describe all of this. And Yeah. But like it's uh, like not, be, not being okay with the status quo. Because if you're okay with the status quo and clocking in at nine and leaving at five, go get a job in corporate America. Yeah. You know, the, the entrepreneurs are the ones who are, you know, I'll clock in at 6 a.m. and I'll clock out at 10 p.m. and then I might take the next two days off. Who knows? Like yes. type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. it's like, or I'm going to work my ass off this year so that I don't have to work at all for the next five or whatever it is. But like, you know, like coming up with those ideas and trying something new. And then if that doesn't work, try it, like, you know, try something different. And if that doesn't work, adjust it and retry it. You yeah. Know? The hardest part of like the ideas and trying something new Honestly, is convincing you that we need to do it. Sure, <laughs> that is the hardest, that's the hardest part because um, I, while I'm really great at coming up with ideas, I'm not great at articulating the ideas to you in a manner that you really can conceptualize and be like, okay, I see where you're trying to go, right? And that's probably the thing that I need to work on is that there is a language barrier between the both of us, even though we both speak English as our first language. True, but I also feel like it's one of those things. It's like you remember growing up, and you're like, you're driving home from somewhere, and you try and convince your your mom or dad. You're like, oh, can we stop at some place like at fast food or whatever? Like, no, we have food at home. Like, I feel that way with you. Where you like, you walk. I got this idea. I'm like, no, we have ideas already, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's, yes, that's fair. You, yes, yes, that is. No, we're already doing this, <laughs> yeah. right? And it's. But I, I also think the important thing in that element is that when I come up with an idea, because I will, I'm the one who's more apt to want to, like, change something quickly because I feel like it's not working and not giving it adequate time to really settle in and see if it will work. And you being like, let's have some patience here and, and try this out for a little bit longer before we're like, this doesn't work, right? Well, and it's funny because, uh, again, back to that same conversation we had with... Um, Emmanuel? With Emmanuel today. Uh, the um, the thing that he was saying is that the, the biggest problem that most people have when it comes to marketing is they, they create an ad and then... 48, 36, you know, 72 hours, whatever it is later, they haven't got the response that they wanted. So they changed the ad. Yeah. And it's like, no, you have to, you have to put it in play, see what happens. I mean, you can make little tiny adjustments here and there, but for the most part, like, you know, see what happens, come back to the drawing board, try again. Yeah. And that's, that, that is key. And that's where I need to learn, learn some patience, but all right. So back to traits, patience is patience that, is a good one. Yeah, that is a good, that is a good one. So, um, let's circle back to what do you think is the most important trait? Um, I think it's just the, I think being adaptable, um, is probably the, the, the most important trait, like being, being ad- like adaptable and level headed. So, um, well, actually, yeah. Like, like, like. Are those two different traits? Yeah. Um. You can pick them both. I don't care. There's, we can, we can bend the rules. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. Yeah. For like an entrepreneur, I think that being it like adaptable, that's probably my number one is that you, you have to be able to understand that what you're doing now is probably gonna be different than what you're doing even later today and not, not freak out about it. Yeah. Um, I think Oh, man, this is so tough because I've got two that I'm choosing between. So I'm going to tell you what they are and then um, I'll let you weigh in or ask you to weigh in. Uh, the first one is, I think, the ability to ask for help, right? Like, like there's no reason to go it completely alone, no reason whatsoever. And then the second one that I have that I think is super important is um, being able to know your priorities, write down the priorities of the work that has to be done and, and focus on those priorities. So focus to the, to the detriment of anything else that has to, that might come in and try and distract you so that you can actually make progress on the things that matter most in your business. So ability to focus or the ability to ask for help. Okay. What do Um, you think? I think the help is probably of the two, I would say that's probably more important. Um, because if you know how to ask for help, then you could probably take care of a lot of other problems. That's true. Um, but that's true. We're quickly running out of time here, so let's just go back to the original question that I had that we said we'd push to the end. So if somebody doesn't have any or, or all or some or most of these attributes that we talked about, should they be think even consider being an entrepreneur? This is probably going to sound harsh, but probably not. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. It's not for everybody. It's really not for everybody. And it's also um, like, look, you, you, you have to have patience. You have to have focus. You have to be able to do hard things. You have to ask for help. You know, you have to, um, I forgot some of the things that you have to have good communication skills. Like there's just this litany of things. And while you don't need all of them, the more of them that you have, the more successful you're going to be. And I think some of them you will build over time, you know, your entrepreneur muscle, if you will, but I, you can't go into it without having any of them or you're, you're just going to fail. You're going to fall flat. Yeah. I think that that that's a good point is that you can learn some of them, but you need to be able to, you need to, you need to have at least a little bit of a lot of them and then you can learn the rest along the way. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. So thanks, Julie, and thank you to our listeners. And you can find out about SV Pace, and that's pretty much it because we didn't have a guest today in our show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, you can connect with us on social media. We're on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, or you can reach us on sbpace.com. 
And you should subscribe to our pod if you are out there listening to this and like it. And make sure to give us a review on whatever platform it is that you listen to our podcast. Yeah, reach out to us about any topics you're interested in hearing more about because we will do everything we can to cover the topic on this show. Um, And we have a book out. It is a number one bestseller on Amazon. It comes with a digital workbook. It's called Seriously, Now What? A Small Business Guide to Disaster Preparedness. And if you've already purchased the book, go ahead and go back to Amazon and give us a review. That's it for today. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And this was BizQuick, helping small businesses across America.